here's what, if you study sitting, here's what you're taught. Sit with your thighs parallel to the floor, right? You've heard this somewhere, okay? Body erect, arms out, here's where you want to practice. Get your loops at that length. You can't do that. Nobody does this. This is not possible. You can't do this because you can't see into somebody's mouth from there. What you'd need is you'd need some kind of loop that was out here with a prism that would shoot down into the patient's mouth. Okay. There are, in the Westport office, there's a set of prism scopes that I built. This is called How Do You Know in the 73,000 Hours, okay? I built a set of prisms that tried to do that, okay? It's really not practical. It's really, you, you can use them for about 20 minutes and then you throw up. Because <laughs> your eyeballs are now out here and you're, it's just, it's really, somebody could probably, like you could take an astronaut and maybe they could learn how to do that, you know, but there's not that many of them to turn into dentists. Most of them kind of like their job. I don't really want to do dentistry this way. Okay, this is a lot of leaning over, reaching for stuff. Okay, and when the dentistry starts to get down, we gotta go. And so what happens is you, if you sit with your legs parallel to the floor, and then you lean over, try to push your chairs back for a second. Sit, legs, you know, approximately parallel. Now try to just go ahead and move your torso, torque your torso forward without slouching. You basically can't breathe. Okay, because diaphragms don't work that way. You, you do for a little while, but you're not breathing. So nobody does it. So you have to procline to go ahead and see the field. So you gotta lift your chair. This is about 110 degrees. You gotta go about 110 degrees. When in doubt, go a little bit too much. Here's the one challenge. You are likely to have a chair that does not have enough waterfall here. And so you impinge mid him. So when you impinge here because you've got a chair, so if you try to do that on this chair, well this chair doesn't tip forward. So if you try to go ahead and sit higher, okay, you're gonna you're gonna trap and you're gonna wind up with you're gonna wind up with numb feet. So one thing you can do at cheap is you can buy a foam wedge. You can literally wedge the chair. So if you've got a stool that's flat with a sharp edge, like that, wedge the chair. Just buy a cheap foam wedge. I mean, they sell a dental version of that somewhere. It's probably like 200 bucks because it's dental. It's like 10 bucks worth of foam. <laughs> and, and try that. And then, and then over time, I, I really think that this, your seat, is a more important tool than your handpiece. So you don't have that right. You know, which handpiece you use, I don't think you could burn those out anyway. So just think about that. So this is a little bit low, okay? This is still a little bit low. I'd want to be up a little bit higher than that. This is pretty good. Saddles are good. There's a reason the saddles work. Saddles work because pretty much you automatically wind up in that posture. Most doctors don't wind up loving saddles because in between working we like to relax. Hygienists tend to go ahead and use saddles more because more of their hours spent actively doing treatment. Less of our time is actually spent doing active treatment than hygienists. So that's one of the reasons saddles are more important for them.